Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Tonight in this video, I'm going to talk about a Thanksgiving lesson <clears throat> and some inspiration for you to um, use the resources you have around you. Um, and so I'm going to talk in my use it and lose it a little bit about um, w how you can adapt and change things to work for your students and in your situation and, and um, what that might look like for you and what that's looked like for me in the past. Speaking of use it or lose it, um, so this whole series of videos that I've done for the last what was week 12, so 12 weeks, um, I've been talking about things that you might consider adding to your classroom, things you might consider taking out. Um, and along the way, I've talked about songs, lessons, ideas, thoughts, um, just lots of things. Um, for some reason, last week on Instagram, Instagram didn't let me post or share my video. I don't know. It lost it. So um, if you're ever like, oh, wow, this is really great. Where can I see this again or whatever? Well, I post it on Facebook and I also post it on YouTube. So if you're curious, you can go to my channel, which is youtube.com slash C slash David Rao or something. Or you can just wherever you're watching, listen to this, there's probably a way to... <laughs> search that um, or it might be linked in the um, it's linked on the links page it might be linked in the caption of this video but anyway if you want to like hey I want to go back and watch that again I put them all on YouTube because I know some people can't access Facebook at school or don't want to or um, so they're all there also I put them on as a podcast so that's there as well but anyway all that to say YouTube I'm sorry or not YouTube, Instagram, I'm sorry. Instagram lost the video from last week. I don't know why. But um, you can find it on YouTube. Okay, um, so tonight I want to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving lessons, and I want to talk about um, what you can use and what you can lose. And I would say that um, what you can use is use what you have, and I have an example of that in just a second. Um, but I feel like I want to talk about the lose it aspect first. I've been talking a lot in these last few weeks about... Um, the stresses that teachers are going through and not trying to compare yourself to other teachers and especially don't compare yourself to teachers on social media or on Pinterest, heaven forbid, um, because I feel like there's this, this thing that keeps going where teachers keep getting stressed out and worried, comparing themselves to others, <clears throat> and you don't need to do that, especially if you're thinking about Pinterest, because Pinterest is this like beautiful ideal world well some pinterest <laughs> beautiful ideal world where like everything is wonderful and gorgeous and organized and color coded and that is not true that is not real life even for those people who post things on pinterest because i have posted pictures on pinterest before and i'll tell you that the camera angle is very specific you are not seeing all the other stuff in the background you're not seeing the um <clears throat> you know my teacher desk or whatever you like Pinterest is weird and selective, and so don't compare yourself to that. But um, all that to say, I don't. I don't think you need to. Um, th there is no such thing as an ideal situation. You don't need to say like, well, this would work if I were in an ideal situation. I hope that um, you see that there are lots of ways to um, take whatever situation you're in and make it worthwhile and valuable. And so I have this quote that I have loved for years and years, and I want to read, and then I'm going to jump into lesson ideas. So this is um, from when I was in college, <clears throat> and it is um, it is a religious quote. It's by Thomas Merton um, from his book Contemplation of a World in Action, or Contemplation in a World in Action from 1998. Um, and while it is religious, there uh, whether you believe in God or not, or or many gods, whatever. I think that the sentiment of this quote is really great and applicable to what I'm talking about tonight. So here's the quote. Do not be impatient and do not be afraid. You already have what you need right in your hands. You have the grace of your vocation and of your love. No earthly situation has ever been ideal. God does not need an ideal situation in order to carry out his work in our hearts. If we do what we can with the means and grace at our disposal... If we sincerely take advantage of our genuine opportunities, the Spirit will be there and His love will not fail us. Our liberation, our solitude, our vision, our understanding, and our salvation do not depend on anything remote from us or beyond our reach. I just love that because I keep going back to 
Do not be impatient and do not be afraid because I'll tell you a lot of times in teaching or not, not even the moments of teaching, but the sitting in the lesson plan and stewing about, okay, but what, what about this? Then what if this happens and this other thing? And, but what, what do I need to do for it? Like I, I get stressed out and I love the quote it says, do not be impatient and do not be afraid. You already have what you need right in your hands. Um, and I also love the part that says no earthly situation has ever been ideal, but we do not need an er ideal situation in order to carry out our work and be successful. So uh, I think uh, that quote is just really helpful for me. And I hope that it gives you some things to think about as well. Um, <clears throat> but I want to talk about um, Thanksgiving specifically because there was a lesson where I a couple years ago, I was like, okay, I really want to teach this turkey lesson. And you all know that I love puppets. And I was like, I don't have a turkey puppet. Okay, now I have a turkey puppet. But at the time, I did not have a turkey puppet. And I was like, but the turkey puppet would be just be so perfect. If I, do, I can't, the lesson just won't work without a turkey puppet. Like, okay, which I know is the like literally the most ridiculous thing I could possibly say. <laughs> like, I must have a turkey puppet. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> in my head, I thought at the time, like, a turkey puppet would just make it so perfect or whatever. Anyway. So I, I like looked around and I was like, what can I use? What can I do? Um, how can I make this work? And that's when I came across um, this peacock puppet that I had and I had like not really ever used. This is a ridiculous, pu I'll just say for the record, this is a very ridiculous puppet. Um, it is a two handed puppet. They, I don't even know if they make this one anymore. Um, I, I really like the Folkmanis brand puppets. Um, and this one is folk manus brand. It has a two handed because one hand goes up here in its little neck and the other one goes in its feathers, which can pop up and out. And it's very pretty. Um, I don't think they make this very large version anymore. I think they only make a smaller version. But anyway, I have this peacock and I was like, I've never had a reason to use this. I've never found a way to use this. And I really want to use this. But I also have this like Thanksgiving lesson. What can I do? And that's when I was like, okay, just like dip into your weird, ridiculous side, your storytelling side, and how can you make this work? So here's what came of that. And um, and uh, this is sort of what happened. So I, I, with my first graders or second grade, whoever you want to do this with, depending on what you think will work, um, I said, so uh, there's this bird and um, the bird really wants to to talk with you all. Um, and it's, a, hello, I am a peacock. Um, I, I am here because I am campaigning. I would like to be the new bird of Thanksgiving. You want to be the new bird of Thanksgiving. Yes, I would like to be the new bird of Thanksgiving because I think a peacock would be well appreciated and enjoyed for Thanksgiving. Okay, I don't think you quite understand um, what the current bird of thanksgiving does oh i know what he does i know everything that the turkey does let me just tell you that turkey that terrible turkey he is togging the the spotlight this turkey is doing everything it can to be front and center and actually i think a peacock would be better suited to that okay no i really don't think that you understand what happens to the turkey at Thanksgiving? Oh, I know what happens to the turkey. The turkey gets top billing. The turkey gets its own TV shows. The turkey gets races named after it. The turkey trot. Ridiculous. The turkey gets huge Macy's Day Parade balloons in its honor. And wouldn't it be more fun to have a peacock? Okay, again, peacock. I don't think you understand what happens to the turkey at Thanksgiving. I do. I understand. Just think about it, kids. Think about it. You're probably doing worksheets right now with turkeys and things on them. Imagine if it was a peacock. Instead of grabbing your gross brown colors to color in all the, and yellows and oranges, you could color green and blue. Wouldn't that not be the most beautiful worksheet? Okay, sorry. It's not possible. Wouldn't that not be the most beautiful worksheets you'd ever done? I bet you would love doing worksheets then if you could do that. Okay, and I again, I really don't think you. And and do you? That's gobble gobble boring. But do you know what sound a peacock makes? And at that point, I did not know what a peacock makes, but it's like or something. Um, so uh, again, I kept trying to stop the peacock and be like, I really don't think you understand what happens to the turkey at Thanksgiving. And the kids kept trying like raising their hand like I will tell it, I will tell it. And I was like, you know what? I have the perfect book to explain to the turkey or to the, the peacock, what happens to the bird at uh, Thanksgiving. So let me read this book to you. And it's this book called Run, Turkey, Run by Diane Mayer, <clears throat> illustration by Laura Rader. I'll just read you a couple of pages and then I'll talk about sort of how I use it. Turkey is having a terrible day. 
It's the day before Thanksgiving, but Turkey won't be giving thanks, not unless he manages to escape. And at this point, I like zoom in on the pictures with kids and I talk about, okay, what do you see this person doing? This person is cutting up, a, I think, what is a carrot? I'm pretty sure that's a carrot. Um, there's something in this bowl here. Maybe it's stuffing. Maybe it's mixed vegetables. We can't really see. The illustrations are not super duper clear. This person's rolling out something, some sort of dough. Not exactly sure what for. Probably this looks like a pie tin. So maybe they're making a pie. I don't know. These things, what do you think these are? And kids are like, um, okay, I think they're potatoes. But some kids are like, well, they could be uh, rolls. Mm -hmm. They could be dumplings. Uh, could be. Um, what else could they be? They could be cookies that have not yet been baked. Okay, yes. So again, the illustrations are just not super duper clear. This little kid carrying something green. Maybe it's for salad. Maybe they're green beans. Not super duper clear, which is fine. Anyway, so but turkey is, it, well, if you look at this pan, that's where the turkey usually goes when the turkey is cooked. So anyway, turkey is not happy about that. But it's not super duper, we sort of have to use our context clues. We have to use our clues to sort of figure out what each of these things is, right? Okay. There's a reason I said that. We'll get back to it in a second. So, Turkey will not be happy unless he manages to escape. Run, Turkey, run! Clompity clomp, here comes the farmer. I'm like, what? Kids, what is the farmer coming to do? He's coming to catch the turkey. Yes, he's coming to catch the turkey, exactly. Why? Because, right, and then we go back to the kitchen and he's gonna, they're gonna cook the turkey. Ooh, see the pig pen? If turkey rolls in the mud, will the farmer think he's a pig? Okay, this is actually very smart of the turkey because the turkey, turkeys don't usually go here. They don't usually go into pig pens. They usually don't roll around in mud or, or hang out with pigs. So this turkey is like, okay, I'm going to go where I don't normally go and I'm going to do things I don't normally do to confuse the farmer. Do you think it's going to work? And the first grader's like, no. No! Run, turkey, run! Muckety muck, here comes the farmer. And this is when I say, like, isn't this supposed to be clompity clomp? Why'd they say muckety muck? And then the kids are like, oh, well, the clomp is coming, clompity clomp from before is coming from the farmer's boots. Okay, which um, is an easy tie in. They understand that we did the little old lady who was not afraid of anything a couple weeks ago for Halloween, and the shoes in that book go clomp clomp. So this is an easy little connection. But now that he's in mud, the shoes sound different because it's going through mud. And so you're not, you're not getting a clomp sound, you're getting a muck muck sound like through mud. This I think is cool and important for kids because they're making the connection between what sound do feet make on hard surfaces, on muddy surfaces in a minute, on in water and other surfaces. So they're making that sort of connection without ever really talking about the sounds that things make or whatever. Um, so they're making that connection to their prior knowledge. Um, but also um, they're having to really connect and listen to the context in the words, which I think is really cool in the text. Oh, and here's where um, I teach the kids a poem for the turkey. And the poem goes, run, turkey, run, run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer, run, run, run. Okay, I'll be honest. I actually teach them that the first time when it goes clompity clomp. We learn run, turkey, run, run, turkey, run. Here's when we say it the second time. When he's in the pig pen, we say it the second time. Run, turkey, run, run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer, run, run, run. And the second time when kids say it, I make sure that they're saying it with um, some emphasis in their voice. So that's not just run, turkey, run, run, turkey, run. Here, it has to have some sort of expression. Run, turkey, run, run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer, run, run, run. And so I make them say it as if they're actually like saying it to a turkey who's being chased. Okay, look, the duck pond. If turkey swims in the water, will the farmer think he's a duck? Brilliant plan on the part of the turkey because turkeys do not swim in water normally. And um, so going to the duck pond, getting in there, maybe saying a little quack quack here and there, it might confuse a farmer, maybe, except this farmer spends all day every day looking after the animals in the farm. So will he be confused? The next page says, no, run, turkey, run. 
Splashity splash. Here comes the farmer. Wait, why splashity splash? I thought it was muckety muck from the other page. And so I have that conversation again. We decide because he fell in the water. He's making a splashing sound, yada, yada, yada. Okay. And this is when we take our poem. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. And I say, you know what? Just for fun, can you put your hands on your knees and like pat those words while you say them? Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. Now you could, on the last part, the run, 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 you could keep your hands all going back and forth, alternating. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. Or you could do those hands together for the run, run, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. I let kids decide what they want to do, whether they want to do hands separate or hands together. It's a little thing, but it's giving them a choice in the moment. And I have them try it both ways. So they try it both ways. They decide which one they want. This is a, a couple reasons. One, because some kids are probably going to do that anyway. They're going to either, one kid might do alternating hands, one might do hands together. But it makes them think about which do they like better and why. Maybe it just feels better. Maybe it um, works for like, you know, like if you're thinking about like drumming, like the sticking or whatever, maybe just it feels correct with the hand position. Maybe they think it's good for emphasis. Run, 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 hands together. I don't know, but it gets them thinking about that. And it gets them thinking, are they doing hands together? Or are they doing them separate and why? It's just to get, get them thinking about it. Okay, but we add padding on the poem. Here's the place. The horse barn. If Turkey sticks his head in the feed bucket, will the farmer think he's a horse? And kids are like, it's, it's not going to work. It's really not going to work. No. Run, Turkey, run! Clankety clank. Here comes the farmer. Wait, why clankety clank? Okay, well, this time he stepped in the feed bucket. And this is actually interesting because if you look at the picture, the turkey still has the bucket on his head and the farmer has the bucket on his foot. So I usually have kids say, oh, well, the farmer has stepped in a bucket. So when he moves around, he's clanking. But then some kids are like, well, with the turkey is moving around, his head might be clanking because he's in the bucket and so that he hears his head clank. And I thought that was very interesting for them to say that. But either way, there's a clanking sound. So this time we do our run turkey run. We add the body percussion. And then I say, you know what? Instead of patting it, could we clap it? Let's try. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. And you can do that. Uh, I say, but you know, what if we, what if we mixed it up? What if we started patting? Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. And then clap the rest. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. Or what if we flip it? Do the first part clapping, the second part patting. Let's try that. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. And again, just what up? can we try it? What would it be like? How would that work? Let's try. Turkey can't fool the farmer. He knows his animals. That's like all he does every day is like sees the animals and whatever, right? So like he knows the animals too well. What's turkey to do? The other animals say, run from the farmyard. You can't say here, the farmer knows it too well. You gotta get out of here. <sighs> run, turkey, run. Crunchity crunch, here comes the farmer. Oh, see, you don't even, kids, you don't even need to explain this one to me. I know why it says crunchity crunch. See, cause I look and I think that the farmer has, is eating some Doritos while he's running. So he's going crunch, crunch, crunch with his mouth. That's gotta be a sound, right? So crunchity crunch, his Doritos while he's running. Yes. And they're like, no. It's like, oh, um, maybe he has some paper and he's crumpling it up in his hands as he runs. So crunch, crunch, crunch of that. And they're like, no. And then one kid will raise their hand and explain, oh, he's running through the leaves. Again, on the very first page, I said, look at this. Do you, can you see, can you, what, you know, like, what are all these people doing in the kitchen? What are, this is just like priming them to like, look for clues in the book as we go, because I'm going to be asked. So as we're going, kids are already, do, they're, they've been primed for that. Um, and so through this, uh, through like this page is a great example. I'm throwing out this random other thing that could perhaps be making a crunching sound, but they're using their context clues to make the correct decision that yes, it probably is the farmer's feet running through the leaves. And in this part I say, okay, we have tried clapping. We have tried patting. Instead, could we try snapping? 
Let's try snapping. I don't know. Let's see if it works. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. Okay, that's not as easy. So, you know, before we tried mixing up the different things, clapping and patting and snapping, let's try and mix it up again. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. Okay, that might work. Uh, what if we mix it up a different way? Try something different. Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. Run, run, run. Or, what if I did this? Run, turkey, run. Run, turkey, run. Here comes the farmer. And the last one, instead of doing like each thing a different level is run, run, run. So pat, snap, or pat, clap, snap. Well, they love that. It's tricky, but they can do it. They love that. So we try it. So he's running from the farmyard. Hmm, trees. If turkey covers himself with branches, will the farmer think he's a tree? Maybe. The farmer doesn't see him. Can it be? Is turkey safe at last? Yes! Thanksgiving Day comes. The farmer and his family eat peas, mashed potatoes, and grilled cheese sandwiches. And look, this big opie empty plate, that's where the turkey is supposed to be because they're gonna try and eat him, but it didn't, they weren't able to. And the kids seem totally happy with grilled cheese, but the parents do not seem so pleased. Turkey gives thanks. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Turkey gives thanks. Thanksgiving Day goes. The farmer and his family are picking out their Christmas tree. And they find run turkey run and kids like love that because he had been hiding in the tree oh my gosh and then i was safe because he was in the tree and then what's of course the next thing next time they go there they find a tree so then we do it again run turkey run run turkey run here comes the farmer run 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 i don't give the kids a prescribed uh, pat, 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 clap, 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 pat, clap, snap. I let them play around and change levels. I want them to have more fluency with the body percussion, so I'm letting them change and try whatever they want as they want. Um, and then the last time I go, okay, this was so great, and you guys are very good at that poem. Can We've added body percussion, and we did it with just words. Could we do it with just body percussion? Let's try it. Sometimes they can do it the first time. Sometimes I'll start out by saying, okay, can we do it with just body percussion? I, hold on, hold on. Tell me which part I'm doing. And they say, run, turkey, run. Good. How about this part? Run, run, run. How about this part? Here comes the farmer. So again, we're making those connections between what they're hearing and what they know from before. I'm trying to make those previous connections. It's a super simple book, and that little poem, that little ad addition is just a, a simple little thing, but what we're doing with the body percussion makes it way more complex and interesting. Um, the poem is not, that poem that I said is not part of the book, um, but it's, it's easy to add, and it's inspired by the words in there. <clears throat> anyway, afterwards, the peacock comes back, and I go, so peacock, after reading that book, what do you think? I have decided not to be the peacock of Thanksgiving. Oh, I see. Because I did not realize the turkey was going to be eaten. If I had known that, I would not have decided to do that. So instead, I will do a different holiday, a safer holiday. I will be the peacock of Halloween. Oh, good. Because Halloween, we like to take big pumpkins and huge knives, and we like to cut into the no 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 I have changed my mind I changed my mind I do not want to be the peacock of Halloween how about mm, the peacock of um Valentine's Day you will be the peacock of Valentine's Day correct when we like to take hearts 
and rip those hearts and eat. No, 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 no. You eat hearts? Gross. Okay, not Valentine's Day. How about um, St. Patrick's Day? Oh, the one where we like to take big cages and try and trap the leprechauns. No, 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 no. Um, how about um, Easter? Easter, do you have a bird for that? We do not have a bird for that. We have a bunny. Oh, I bet I could get the bunny to, to give up the job. What do you do for, for Easter? You just like say hello to the bunny or whatever? You don't eat the bunny, do you? No, we don't eat the bunny. Oh, thank goodness. What we do eat is a bunch of eggs. Eggs? You eat eggs? No, I can't do that. So it's, the kids are like, oh my gosh, what holiday could the peacock be for? Can't be Thanksgiving, can't be. And so like one time the uh, last week or so, one kid was like, flag day? I was like, mm, flag day, maybe. Anyway, so we try and find a holiday that the peacock could take over because um, all of the ones that we came up with so far. Oh, the, the other one kid, one kid was like, what about 4th of July? I was like, oh, 4th of July? Yes, 4th of July. I will be the peacock of 4th of July. I'm already blue. I could wear something red. Okay, great. So for 4th of July, we take a, like a match and we light something on fire and it goes up into the air and it explodes. I do not want to be the peacock of 4th of July. I want to be the peacock of a very nice, safe, calm holiday. We'll have to think about this. Yeah, so the peacock decides not to... Um, to do that. Now, another way that you can take this book and make a connection is if you teach the uh, Five Fat Turkeys poem, five, or song, Five Fat Turkeys Are We, We Slept All Night in a Tree. So this book is all about the turkey trying to hide in a place that is unexpected. And that whole song, Five Fat Turkeys, is about turkeys hiding in a place that is unexpected so that they can survive the holiday. And so but I, I usually pair that with this book. Um, just because it's fun and because kids like it and it's a sort of a simple, easy connection. But like I said, the whole the whole reason I bring up the the, hol the Thanksgiving peacock, who is now a staple in my classroom, was I did not have a Thanksgiving or, or a turkey puppet. I didn't have what I thought I would really want and I needed to make that story so fun and exciting. And having the peacock has made it, I think, more memorable for kids and more exciting. Um, so just like you do, you do not need that ideal situation. You do not need that perfect thing to make it to make your lesson great. You make your lesson great by having so much fun with it and exploring and trying new things. Um, and again, for this book, I don't have a preset, like they must do this poem this one way. There are a lot of ways that they can do the poem and still have a lot of fun, be super successful with it. Okay, that's all for this week. I am not here next week because I get the whole week off for uh, fall break for Thanksgiving. So um, I won't be back next week, but I'll be back the week afterwards. So I hope you'll come and join me for that. Again, I don't know Instagram. I'm so sorry that Instagram lost my video last week and it seems to be glitchy right now. So if you can't find it on Instagram, you can find it on Facebook or YouTube um, or the podcast, any of those places, you'll be able to make that um, content and see it again. Okay, well, thanks so much for coming along with me tonight. I hope you have a great week and a great time off next week, however much time you get, if you get, if you're in the U.S. Um, and I will see you in two weeks for another Musical Monday. Good night, everyone.